Hey, we are back in the studio here at Davis Media Access. Welcome and thanks for tuning in. Today we're talking about plans to develop a Davis Adult Day Center here in Davis and um, expand the services for elders and for caregivers a bit here in Yolo County. Um, my guests today are Cindy Royval Unger and Don Myers Perky, and we're going to hear from them about how this process is going. So first, let's start with what you do now and the context of your work. I'll start with you, Dawn, and, and, and how that works into this. Yeah, um, I work at uh, Program Director at YOLO Adult Day Health Center, and I've been there 20 years and have been watching that program and helping it grow for the last 20 years. Great. And Cindy? Uh, thanks for having us. Yeah, um, thanks for being here. I work currently, I am the Alzheimer's and Dementia Trainer for Comfort Keepers, an in-home care company. But I've been serving Davis and YOLO County seniors for 30 years in the primarily Alzheimer's field. Great, that's amazing work. Thank you for doing that. Um, so right now there is a, a day program, but it's in Woodland. And so if someone in Davis needs to, to get there, they have to navigate to Woodland somehow. So plans to bring this to Davis. Yes. Um, let's talk about that. What, what would be involved in a day program? Well, a day program is any anything that you want it to be. And one of the things that I think that we as a team, we have a team of people that, that are working on this, are very proud of is being able to integrate the Davis community, <clears throat> being able to serve people individually. Mm -hmm. So what is a day program going to look like? It depends on what our participants look like. Okay. If we have <clears throat> an artist, we're going to be doing art. If we have a musician, we're going to incorporate music. Gardeners, gardening. Um, we hope to incorporate children, a lot of volunteers, and Davis is a wonderful place for that. We already have a list of people and growing who want to volunteer for this program. Um, whatever you can do, or I can do, or Dawn can do, someone with a memory impairment or a frail elderly person can do as well. It just may need to be modified a bit and supervised a little bit. Right. So let, let's back up a little bit. Who's eligible? You just touched on it a little bit. But when we think mm -hmm. of daycare, we obviously think of children. But there's this is daycare for elders and elders with memory impairment mm -hmm. issues. So it's respite for caregivers. Too, it is respite right? for caregivers as mm -hmm. well. But it is also programming for people primarily with the memory impairment, that is the majority of the people who will seek our services, but also for people who are just a little frail and don't can't be left safely at home mm -hmm. or don't want to be at home. They want to be in a group of people with like interests and have fun and, and do things. It's very much a social model of programming, and it's like a club. Yeah. It's, it's daycare is, you know, you do think of children. Yeah. Um, I like to call it a club for grown-ups. I like that. <laughs> I, I took care of my mother um, when she had Alzheimer's, and I know that the isolation, not only for her, but for the caregiver, is, mm -hmm. is real. So this is a wonderful step in the right direction. Yeah. Um, what are we seeing here in Yolo County? What's driving the need? Well, the um, statistics in Yolo County are actually higher than in the state of California. Mm. So, But in general, we all know that one in three seniors will get dementia. And it's also the sixth leading cause of death for, mm -hmm. um, for all um, uh, people. So the, uh, it's considered an epidemic, and there is an enormous amount of concern about the demographic of the baby boomers moving into, uh, yes. uh, into their senior years. So at the center, we've already started seeing it. Um, in the last two years, our waiting list has gotten to the point where we are now serving people that have been on that waiting list for 18 months. So, and that just continues to grow. So wow. day programming is really a community-based um, program that works with the family. And so it's really a desirable direction to go as caregivers become more stressed. And, mm -hmm. and we can't emphasize enough the value for caregivers. Yeah. It's not at all uncommon for the caregiver to become the more frail of the, of the couple due to the demands that's placed on that person to be fully responsible for yeah. somebody they love so much. And so that stress leads to all kinds of cardiac issues, depression, and we all know the physical and psychological effects of, of that. Yeah. yeah, I watched that happen with my parents, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah the struggle is, is real, mm -hmm. and finding resources is really hard. So that's why I was so interested in helping you get the word out yeah. about this. So how is, uh, how, what would a program in Davis look like? How would it be funded? How, how does all that happen? 
Well, you know, we put together the task force um, almost a year ago, just knowing that it was going to be a big lift, building something from nothing. Right. And uh, so right now our phase is really, in this phase, bringing in the community where we want to get as much uh, input from folks that will be using the, um, using the center. But what we're going, but it, uh, a program that we'll be designing will be licensed by California uh, Department of Social Services. It's called Community Care Licensing. Mm -hmm. So we'll find the right fit with the right organization, and then we will help them develop their uh, licensing package. And once that's together, of course, the space is our biggest, uh, right. uh, the other, uh, the, the who's going to run it and the space that we'll need. So we're looking for about 4,000 square feet. It has to be a space that we can renovate to really meet the needs and, mm -hmm. and, and to build it to describe, uh, to fit the description that Cindy gave. It's a safe environment, a, a, a comfortable place that offers all kinds of things that it will really engage people and, and tap into all the different interests that people will come to us. Also, another big piece of our program will be the Caregiver Resource Center. We've also already received a very nice donation to create the Peggy Phelps Caregiver Aww. Resource Center. And most people in this community, yes. in this county, uh, think very highly of Peggy Phelps, who we lost in early December. Um, but uh, her legacy, her impact on our community is going to move forward. And so um, through a nice donation, we'll have that piece. And that'll That's be great. very very valuable to caregivers as a place of support, as a place for education and resources, not, and even if they aren't tapping into the day program itself. Because some people really can't do well in a social setting. Right. I'm really glad to hear about the, mm -hmm. the resource center being mm -hmm. named after Peggy. If there was anything about elders and elder care in this county that she didn't know about, it wasn't worth knowing. <laughs> she was very Absolutely happy right. Too. Yeah. So you mentioned ways that people can plug in. I know that I'm signed up for a focus group coming up, mm -hmm. and there are a couple of those. Tell us about those a little bit. Um, I, I think the input from the caregivers, that is that is hugely important to our committee. Mm -hmm. it, they are the experts. Right. Uh, as much as Dawn and I have worked in this field for 20, 30 years, they are the ones doing the work. They are the ones at home 24 hours a day. They know what they need. Mm -hmm. They know what kind of program would best meet the needs of their loved one and for their own needs for, um, for the resource center. So getting that input early and often and all along the process is going to help us design something that's very, very useful okay. um, for the Davis community. I Dawn had talked a little bit about the space and I'm very, very excited about the space and 4,000 square feet is the optimum space mm -hmm. for the amount of people that would like to have being able to organize spaces um, to serve the individual client needs. So you have spaces that have a lot of activity, and then you have spaces that are quiet, quiet areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have green spaces. You have spaces that have, you know, color and children and, and are a little busy but not, not um, noisy. Right. So all of these opportunities for people to engage, they're, they're using many of their senses because they're losing other things. And so they rely very, very heavily on their just ability in to manage the world in a, on a sensory level. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important piece of all of this. And in this kind of program, an elder who comes and participates, they would come for, say, how long on a given day? Um, it depends, and it depends on the need of the person. We're trying to accommodate as many caregivers and um, participants as we can. There are those people that work full time. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to say, okay, our program's open from seven o'clock in the morning until six o'clock in the evening to accommodate the working caregivers. Okay. There are going to be people that cannot be in a program that long. That's just too long of a time for them. So we're going to have afternoon and morning options mm -hmm. available so that it really can be tailored toward the client and their, their caregiver. It's going to be quite a place. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> <laughs> And so, and we really, this is going to be built by the people of Davis, and uh, and we have a survey. If you can go to the YOLO Healthy Aging website, okay. there's a survey there that we're really hoping that uh, caregivers, past caregivers, um, anyone, even if their loved ones out of the area, 
to, to fill out the survey and give us an idea of what they would look for in a day program if they were to tap into it. And then, of course, the two focus groups on May 25th and June 6th. Those dates are also on the web page, and you can get on our Facebook, and that way you'll be able to say, stay tuned in and, and be uh, current with our activities. Right. So that web page may be on the screen, but just in case it's not, let, let's give that URL. Uh, it's YOLO Healthy Aging. Dot org. Okay, I think it is on screen. Mm -hmm. I'm getting, getting the high sign from over there. Good. All right, well, we're actually almost out of time, so I want to thank you for coming in and sharing your expertise. And I, I want to say to people who are caregiving right now, you may not have the time to participate, but if, like me, you're a couple of years out of caregiving, I think we have a lot of um, feedback to offer. And so I want to encourage people to go to the link and sign up, and let's help make this a reality here in Davis. So, Let's do it. Thanks so much for the work you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And thank you for tuning in here in the studio at Davis Media Access. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We're everywhere these days. Thanks. <laughs>